let's have a good conversation here. Joining me now is Tim Shriver. He's the head of the Special Olympics. He's got a new podcast out called Need a Lift. Tim, uh, I assume uh, there's a podcast about ride sharing apps. Uh, do I have that right? Exactly. How did you know? I mean, I didn't even have to tell you. I didn't have to send you the promo sheet. It's about ride sharing of a different sort. It's like about ride sharing for the country. You yeah. know, it's ride sharing uh, for communities. It's right. It's like trusting again that the people that show up at your door might have your best interest at heart and might be willing to actually work with you to make a difference. Yeah, and so oh, <laughs> it's uh, in all seriousness, of course, it's about yeah. uh, spirituality and healing wounds, yeah. and it's about Democrats and Republicans healing wounds. On that one, Tim, I'm going to wish you a lot of luck. Okay, there's a lot of wounds. Look, this to is heal. for and this is this is for anybody who has given up hope uh, that the country can't solve its problems. And you, depending on how you count, that's about sixty or almost seventy percent of us at different times. It's Republicans and Democrats who don't trust each other anymore. It's you know baby boomers like me and younger generation who don't trust each other. Uh, it's heartland and coastland folks who just don't think we see eye to eye enough. And this podcast is all about like, just take a chance on each other. Just listen a little bit to the real story. Because the story, the contempt-based media is telling us actually, in my view, is not accurate. I don't, I'm not going to say it's a lie, but it's a distortion. We're actually in a lot better shape than the media tends to tell us we're in. And I think that's, that's a story worth telling. So how do you bring people back together? Um, how do you get them to believe in each other when we're so divided? And how do you get to them to a place of hope? So I think there's a couple of things. So first of all, um, here's, here's some good news. We're actually not as divided as we're led to believe. Most Americans agree, even on the most controversial issues, most Americans agree. We don't actually have a division problem we have a contempt problem. So number one is the, the way to solve the contempt problem is to lower the contempt in your own life, the lower the ways, the, the amount of contempt you use when characterizing other people. Uh, so the first thing is we don't have a division problem. We have a, democracies are rooted in division, right? That's division, differences of opinion are not a problem. Uh, contempt and hatred is a problem. And if you think anybody thinks they're going to solve a problem by treating the other side with contempt, uh, they need to think again. Contempt does nothing more than make an enemy for your cause. So the first thing is we actually are not as divided as we think. Number two, if contempt is the problem, we actually have the means to solve it. It's, 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 it's a relationship issue. So all you got to do is up the amount of dignity in your uh, in the way in which you disagree and reduce the amount of dehumanization in the way you disagree. And almost automatically, you'll find you listen better, you're calmer, you're more likely to find common ground, and you're more likely to find a solution. The third thing you got to do is you've got to filter. This is a big message I think a lot of people are saying. It's not just us. You got to filter the sources of news you take in. Uh, people have... I've got to realize that TikTok and Twitter, X, they've got a lot of great stuff on them. But if you're looking for facts, if you're looking for reliable analysis, if you're looking for the truth, you've got to find people who have as a business the capacity to tell the news with authenticity, with thoroughness, and with objectivity. So you got to filter. And if you're scrolling through Twitter or TikTok or Instagram looking for news and you're clicking on Every hateful or fearful click, you're going to get sick, but you're also not going to get the truth. So, you know, this is a new challenge for all of us to filter how we ingest information in our society. It's a, it's a, it's almost like it's a new superpower that we've all got to learn how to use. Yeah. So I think that the algorithms create a problem here, and I'm I'm not against social media. We, Young Turks is uh, one of the leaders in digital media. We're the longest running show in internet history. Uh, we were the first YouTube partner. So I love digital media. Uh, but uh, the algorithms do create uh, incentives and disincentives that are that are problematic, right? Because so, for example, at the Young Turks, Tim, I mean, what you say speaks to me so much. We have a program called Operation Hope. 
And that's where our volunteers try to bring a little bit of goodness in the world and hope in the world. We do a segment called Operation yeah. Joy, even though we're a news show, yeah. because we've got to have some joy in our lives as we fight to make other people's lives better, right? But when I go to either compliment or criticize both parties, the algorithm says, no, wait, wait, wait. If you are doing only one side, then the advocates of that side will engage and propel your content. But if you are right. being fair to both sides, well, then neither side will promote it, and hence, that's right. It'll get it'll sink to the bottom. So you've got you've got you've got the problem right there. Yeah, and so that's a giant problem. We still fight past it. We've got the the luck, the privilege, et cetera, of being one of the larger shows online. So maybe we can get past it. But if you're especially if you're a, a young new entrant into digital media, if you are fair. The algorithms are going to punish you, and 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 that's because society punishes you. They go, wait, wait, wait. I don't want to hear that Kamala Harris might be wrong or Donald Trump might be wrong. If I'm on Trump's side, all I want to hear is beautiful things about how perfect he is. And if I'm on Kamala Harris's side, all I want to hear is about how she's an angel. So how in the world do we get past that problem, Tim? Well, um, here's the thing. I I think. Uh, depending on how you count, 60 to 70% of Americans are exhausted, are anxious, and are afraid. And they're not exhausted and anxious and afraid because of the threat of Germany or Mexico or, uh, you know, uh, some country in the Middle East or even China. They're anxious and exhausted and afraid because of their relationships in this country. We're destroying each other. When you get to the point where the algorithm combined with the business model is incentivizing people to actually erode their family. We, 100 million Americans have ended a relationship in their family or with close friends because of politics, because of exactly the reason you just described. So we need change agents. You know, We need a Rosa Parks or a Martin Luther King. We need pioneers who are going to say, hey, wait a second. It's not worth it to win. If what you're winning is the destruction of the country, the destruction of your family, the destruction of your faith tradition, uh, the destruction of your own values, the destruction of your mental health. If what you're winning by clicking is, lo is loneliness, is anxiety and despair of the future, it's not worth the price. So, you know, that may sound idealistic. Um, how are you going to beat uh, profit incentives? How are you going to beat popularity incentives, fame incentives? But look, there's a lot of people doing it. There's a lot, everybody on my podcast so far, you know, the peace activists in the Middle East, they've all lost a family member to violence from the other side. And what are they doing with it? They're not inflaming it. They're trying to stop it. I mean, why wouldn't you, if you'd lost someone, in, your mother, your son, your brother, in the, in the case of the, the, the folks I had on from, uh, from, the, from the conflict there, They've all lost people intimately close to them. They don't want more inflammation. They don't want more anger. They don't want more violence. They want it to stop. You know, and we have to remember there are many, many millions of Americans who also want it to stop. And they're working. Killian No, who will be on the podcast, building recovery cafes. Why? People are addicted. They're lonely. They're they're closed down. What is she doing instead of blaming them and shaming them and demonizing them? It's starting businesses that employ folks who are on the street, bring them into coffee shops, build places that are safe. These are heroic Americans. Most of us don't know about them because of the problem you just stated. The algorithm doesn't reward it. So in the face of that, you know, we need some, we need some gutsy people. We need some courage. Uh, and there's a lot of us out there who want an end to it. I think we've just got to get organized and get focused and realize that there's more of us than there are of the people that want hatred. And, and try to create a wave of change. Yeah, and I, I want the audience to understand that the algorithm is not some sort of nefarious evil machine. All it's doing is it's rewarding engagement because they want you to stay on the platform. So if you engage in the fights, then you're feeding the wrong side of the algorithm, right? That's if, right. If you're clicking on hateful headlines, you're paying for contempt and dehumanization to win. We all do it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not pointing the finger here. I've done it. We've. Done, oh, and I've I agree with you. It. Social media is fantastic. It's given voices to hundreds of millions of people to tell their story. It's great. But when the business model 
tells all those people who are trying to join, hey, when you join this, these platforms, you're going to win with hate and you're going to lose with love. That's a losing story for our country. Uh, I, I don't doubt that hate and contempt are powerful. But I will not accept uh, that a higher calling, that purpose, that compassion are not just as powerful. Yeah. Uh, they're not as well organized, but they are just as powerful. And you guys have done a fantastic job. I'm so proud to be on this uh, show with you guys because you've done such a fantastic job of balancing news and inspiration. That's what we need. Thank you. I, I appreciate that, Tim. So look, and, and to be f uh, fair, look, I, I've done my share of fighting. No question about it, right? And so, and there's a time for that when you're standing up for uh, people who are powerless and who are weak and yeah. who need somebody to stand up for them. But there's also a time to come back together and to heal. And 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 so, look, one of the on a political level, I want to talk a little bit about spirituality in a second too. But on a political level, uh, so look, we're on the left, we're on the Democratic side. Obviously, the Shriver and Kennedy family, generally speaking, certainly on the left and Democratic side. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, but uh, but on the on the issue of talking to uh, one another, unfortunately, it's the Democrats who say no, don't talk to the right wing because that'll platform them, and so you shouldn't go on their shows. They shouldn't come on your shows. We should be on a, in our own silos. You shouldn't give them any yeah. oxygen. I think that's a spectacularly bad idea. I'm curious what you think. Well. I think what uh, here's the sad truth. Um, when you challenge your own side, you're very lonely. Yep. So if I say uh, Democrats are equally responsible for contempt in our culture as Republicans are, uh, I piss off all the Democrats who are my friends, and I don't win many friends on the Republican side because they don't like me already. Yeah. That, that that would be the premise, right? Yeah. So 100%. what does it make me? It makes me. It makes me. Uh, it makes me a little lonely and it makes me have to take some chances. Uh, and people on both sides need to do that. I mean, no one's going to listen to me if they think I'm a left wing wing nut, if they're Republicans, no matter what I say. Um, and if I challenge my own team, which I need to do, and we all need to do, I don't tell Republicans, hey, treat uh, Democrats with more dignity. I tell Republicans, challenge your own team to treat people with more dignity. Same thing to people on the left. The most common response I get when I talk to Republican groups about this is we treat people with dignity. It's the left wing that is the cancel culture, the hate culture, the demonization culture. If I talk to the Democrats, they say, we're tolerant, we're open-minded. It's the Republicans who are hateful and racist and misogynist and horrible people. No one sees their own contempt. Yep. Contempt hides in disguise, you don't see it. Once we see it, we can start to address it. So part of what we're trying to do on Need a Lift is let people see the alternative. You don't win anybody over. I mean, you can fight for those who don't have anyone to fight for them. You can advocate for them. But when you advocate for them with hatred, you win enemies for them. Yeah, that's the message. Yeah, no, I love it. I totally agree with it. I mean, I'm doing it in the, right now. I'm having conservatives come on here. I'm going on conservative shows, getting a lot of heat from Democrats and the left for doing it. Uh, but we're going to keep on doing it because you're absolutely right, Tim. We got to take some risks in order to get yeah. to the right place. And if we're not talking to each other, we're, we're not being human. Uh, we we. Like, I mean, we don't have a country. We don't have a country. I mean, we're, we're our country. Look, I. 50% of our kids at the age of 18 uh, don't see a future for themselves and have almost clinical levels of despair. Now, if, if you don't, if you think that, and this I believe is true, that dehumanizing contempt in politics is contributing to the despair of our children, that's too high a price to pay. Yeah. Uh, you may win an election, but you're, you're destroying the hopes and dreams of children by doing so. Not worth it. Yeah, not worth it. Not for me. You know, I'll uh, use an example I used on a conservative show today, which is: Look, Trump uh, when he was running in 2016 said he wanted a total and complete ban on Muslims entering the country. My family's Muslim. 
So on the one hand, what am I gonna do? Am I supposed to agree with that? No, of course not, that's an unreasonable ask. On the other hand, what I'm saying is even despite that, I am willing to talk to people who believe that because they're never going to change their minds until they meet someone like me and go, "Oh my god." Well, but it's exactly, <laughs> but it's so obvious when you say it that way. Like if you want to fight the Muslim ban if that was what his position was, the only way to fight it is by introducing people to Muslims so they'll meet and understand. If you start saying, "You Islamophobic horrible person," uh, I'm going to you know, you may feel better. But you haven't won anybody over. You've just created more Islamophobia. Yeah, 100%. So what do you want? Do you want people yeah. to end hatred of Muslims or do you want it to continue? If you want to end it, treat them with dignity. Even as hard and as difficult as that may seem, open the door for the conversation. That's the only way to, to, to make a change. And just because you're having a conversation doesn't mean you agree. It means you're just engaging Absolutely in not. dialogue. That's all. Absolutely not. You don't have to, you know, we say something in, the, in our dignity work. Don't change any of your principles. If you have strong principles, fight for them. If they're extreme right or extreme left, fight for them. Believe in the things that motivate you, that drive you from the heart. Work for them with all the passion you've got. Add one principle. Treat the other side with dignity. It shouldn't That's be, it. Yeah, it shouldn't be that hard to ask for. All right, last thing, uh, Tim. So, uh, you know, grew up Muslim, I'm now atheist. Uh, although, uh, if, you, if we had a longer conversation, I could introduce you. Oh, come to on! I need you on the podcast so I can convince you that's a that's a, <laughs> that's a questionable position. <laughs> no, but you know what I was going to say is that you could even argue that I'm a spiritual atheist, which is kind of okay. a, a, a funny oxymoron, right? So now, but tell me how spirituality plays into this. I think you know we have many many differences, uh, culturally, racially, ethnically. Uh, human beings are enormously diverse. Uh, but we also have some things in common. The things that we have in common are the deepest parts of us, our common hungers, our common fears, our common hope. Uh, we all want to matter. We all want to belong to something bigger. We all want to feel that other people care and value us. We want belonging. We want purpose. We want to serve. Those are the gifts that I would argue come at the deepest levels of our experience, the spiritual levels. Uh, they don't necessarily come from the ideas we have. They don't come from our policy positions around immigration or education or taxes or defense spending. But at a deep, at the deeper level, we do find a common language. We all grieve. I, 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 I lost a member of my family last week. There's almost no one who wouldn't say to me, I'm sorry. I don't care what political persuasion they are. They know when they see a tear in my eye, they know what that feels like. We can identify with each other. We can understand the pain and the dreams. We can understand what it means to, raise, to have a child in your arms and love that child unconditionally. These are the spiritual gifts of our own experience. And sometimes when we're so distracted, so afraid, so angry, we need to draw a little bit deeper to see each other at a slightly deeper level so that we can allow that common bond it comes from our common hopes and dreams to give us the chance to find a way to build a more common future. All right, I love it. Tim Shriver uh, hosts the new podcast, Need a Lift. Everybody check it out. Tim, thanks so much for joining us, appreciate it. You guys are great, thank you very much for having me. No problem.